Hello and welcome to Business 216, Computer Applications for Business. This is our fourth video for this class and we will learn an introduction to Word and we'll also see a visual overview of the Word window. Here are the topics that we will learn in this video and before we open our Word window, I will close this. I will use my keyboard shortcut Alt F4 to close this and open the Word uh, window. To open a Word document, I have my Word icon pinned right here. And as you can remember from our previous videos, we learned how to pin an icon on the taskbar. If you do not have yours pinned on the taskbar, there are different ways to open a Word uh, window. You can either press the window key on your keyboard to open the start menu. You can also press the start menu or you can uh, click here on the search icon right there and then you can type word to search the word window which is right there if you would like to pin that to your taskbar you can right click that and you can uh, either pin to start or pin to the taskbar I have mine pin and that's why you can see it's showing unpin from start and unpin from taskbar so I'll go ahead and escape from here and I will click on my icon here uh, for the Word to open the Word document. Uh, you can see the recommended documents that you have uh, recently opened. Yours might be different from mine. And you can also see the recent files that you had uh, recently opened on your backstage view. To open a blank document, since this is highlighted, we can either click the blank document and it will open uh, a blank word document and we can also uh, press enter on our keyboard or we can press escape and either of those three methods will open for you a blank document for word so here we have a blank uh, word document open and we can see up here we have our ribbon you can remember from our first video uh, we did an overview of the ribbon and uh, the buttons that are included in the word ribbon. To do a quick recap on that, uh, we learned that these are the tabs up here. These are the groups right there. And we also learned that every group has different buttons. We can see all these are the buttons for the font group. Here are the buttons for the paragraph group. And we have every group with different buttons. And this is different with every tab that you click on. If I click on the insert tab, you can see we have different groups there. And we also have different buttons. And if I click on the layout uh, tab, we can see the same thing. We have different groups there, right there. And we also have different buttons on every group. The other thing that we learned was the quick access toolbar, which is right there. And we learned that we do have an option to place that to show above the ribbon and we can also show below the ribbon right there. We also learned that we can add commands or buttons to the quick access toolbar by either adding from the ribbon. So if I click on a uh, bold, I will right click on that. And if I add to access toolbar, I can see that I have added that to the quick access toolbar. We can also, um, remove a button from the quick access to bar by uh, right clicking on that button and then click remove from the quick access toolbar. The other thing that we can do to customize our quick access toolbar is click on that and we can see we have more options there to customize the quick access toolbar. I can click on the commands right there and that opens for me a dialog box which I can use to customize. So I can see from here, I have popular commands. I can click on that arrow and I can see commands not in the ribbon. And I can also see all commands. I can click on all commands right there. And once I have that, if I would like to search a command or a button to add to the quick access toolbar, I will click on any uh, command right there. And then I will type the first letter that starts with the command that I would like to add. So for our case, I will type S and it takes me to all the commands that start with the letter S and I will use this arrow to scroll down and search send to Microsoft PowerPoint 
and I see it's right there. So I will click to select that and I'll also click add to add that to the quick access toolbar and that is added right there. Another thing that I can do if there are commands here that I do not want in the quick access toolbar, I can click on that command and click remove to remove that. I can also click on that and uh, click on remove to remove that. We'll not be needing those two buttons because we'll be using the keyboard shortcuts. Control Z to undo and Control B to board. So we do not need them there. And uh, now I will click on OK. And once I do that, you can see we have customized our quick access toolbar right there. We removed the commands or the buttons that we do not need. And we also, we added a command that we will be using later uh, to send our word to PowerPoint. From our first video, we also learned that this is called the title bell. And now uh, you can see my name right here. And it's because I'm signed in. So if I click on that, I'll be able to access my information about uh, my Microsoft account. And if you're signed in, you can click on that to access information about your Microsoft account. Right here, this is the minimize uh, button. So if I click on that, it will reduce the window to the taskbar. And if I want to display the word window again, I will just click on that and it displays again. This is the restore down button. So if I click on that, you can see uh, it has restored down my window and I can use the keyboard shortcut to uh, maximize uh, my window again. So if I, if I click over here, you can see it says uh, maximize my window. So I can either click on that button or can use my keyboard shortcut, Windows up arrow key, and that will maximize my window. So to restore down, if you're using the keyboard shortcut, it's Windows and down arrow key, and to maximize is Windows and up arrow key. So uh, the other thing we learned on the title bar is that we can see the name of the file here, and we can see in our case, we haven't uh, saved our file. So the next thing we will do here, we will save our file so we can give our file a proper name. So we use the keyboard shortcut F12 and I have to make sure that I'm saving this to the correct location. So I'm clicking on my USB drive and uh, expand that, expand that. And you can remember we created uh, these folders in our first video. So I'm making sure that I'm saving in our class videos and that's uh, the video files and I'm saving that in Word and I will make sure that I'm giving uh, my document a uh, correct name. So I will name this introduction to Word. And that's the correct extension. So I will go on and uh, either press enter or click save to save that. And we can see now that name has changed right there. With our document saved, uh, these here are called the margins, the dark gray areas right here. And we can see on this end too. And these are only visible if we have our ruler on. And to show our ruler, you can go to the view tab on your ribbon and then on the show group you can check on that button there to show the ruler and if you uncheck that that hides the ruler and you can see we cannot be able to see the margins anymore but if i check that i can see uh i showed the ruler right there and we can now see our margins right there the margin shows the uh the blank spaces around the edges of your document content and we will see that more clearly when we have content in this document and that being said let's use our trick and type some uh, random text here and with our content typed in our document we can now clearly see the margins uh, the blank spaces around the edges of our document right here on the side at the top right there and we can also see on this other side another important thing to learn in word document is to turn on the non-printing characters and you turn them on uh, from the home tab on your ribbon and uh, from the paragraph group right there 
and you can see my mouse that button there it turns on the non-printing characters and there's also a keyboard to do that which is control shift asterisk and you can see it's right there so if i press control shift asterisk it turns on the non-printing characters now before typing a word document it is important to make sure that the non-printing characters are displayed as they will provide you a visual representation of details that you might miss um, when you're typing your document for example the symbol here right there it represents uh, the end of a paragraph and there are uh, the dots in between the words as you can see there are several dots or there are several periods in between those words that marks the spaces between the words it is also important to understand that or uh, when you're typing a word document and you would like to go to the next page or uh, it is not efficient to use the enter 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 button until you go to the next page it is more efficient if you would use uh the page break to insert a page break and go to the next page to do that if i click on the insert right there and i click on the page break it will insert for me a new page which means it will end this current page that I am in and it will move me to the next page. And you can see we also have the keyboard shortcut to do that. Control plus return or control enter. So if I press control enter, it takes me to the next page. And I can see up here, I see the page break right there. So if I do not have the non-printing characters turned on, I wouldn't see the page break right there. So if I turn the non-printing characters off, control shift asterisk, I don't see the page break right there. I don't see the paragraph marks right there. And it is hard to understand how I got to the third page. But if I turn the non-printing characters on again, I can see I got to the second page by using the enter, enter, enter several times. But when I got to the second page to go to the third page, I inserted a page break right there and I got to the that page right there. To emphasize on that, if I were to type some paragraphs here on the second page and I will use my trick to type the random text, enter. And if I scroll down to the that page and I add more text or more paragraphs right there, now I have several paragraphs in the third page and I have several paragraphs in the second page and on the first page. So if I add more paragraphs on the first page, the text that is on the second page will move down because I did not use a page break right there. But the content or the text that I have on the third page, it will stay positioned at the top of the document. And I will show you that by typing some text here. I will also add another paragraph here. And I will add a third paragraph here. And you can see as I type my paragraphs here and as I enter the text on the second page on the co the contents on the second page are moving down. The more I type more contents here, the more the content on the second page keeps moving down. But if I scroll down to the third page, my uh, paragraphs are still positioned at the top of the page. That's why it's very important when you're moving to the next page and especially when you're writing your research papers and you would like to insert a bibliography page, it is important to use the page break because even if you add more text to your pages, the page that has the bibliography will always remain intact and the text will always be at the top of the page. Sometimes when you're typing a uh, your document uh, you would like to know where you are uh, for example you would like to know what page you are at 
and you can use the status bar which is right here right here down there you can be able to see what page you are at and how many pages you have in your document you can also be able to tell how many words you have in your document and you can see for our document here we have 830 words and we are in page three of three pages if you are on the last page of your document and you would like to navigate to the first page at the top of your document you can use the control home keyboard shortcut so if i press control and home key it takes me at the beginning of my word document and if i press control and key it will take me at the end of my word document and if you can remember we learned uh, more of the control home and control and key in our first videos on windows explorer if you also would like to select or highlight some words or some paragraphs or lines from your word document you can easily do that and i will press Control home to go to the beginning of my document and uh for example if you would like to select just one line of your uh, word document you can use your mouse and as you can see right there uh, you can see that arrow shaped and if i click on that it selects only the first line of that document if i would like to select lines that are next to each other i can hold down my mouse and i can move that down and as i'm moving that down it's selecting all the lines that are next to each other i can move down and i see as i move it down it selects the lines that are next to each other the other way to do that is i can make sure that my cursor is right there at the beginning of the sentence that i would like to select or at the beginning of the line that i would like to select and if i hold down my shift key and come to the end of the sentence and click that it selects the entire line so if i would like to select another line no problem as i'm still holding down my shift key i can come to the end of the paragraph and if i click there it will select the entire paragraph another way to select the entire paragraph is i can click anywhere in that paragraph and if i triple click it selects the entire paragraph if you double click when you are anywhere inside the line if you double click it selects just that word if you triple click it selects the entire paragraph if for example i would just like to select just the word one word in my paragraph and not select the paragraph mark right there i can do that i can make sure that i am clicking my mouse to bring the cursor just before the word that i would like to select and then i will press the shift key on my keyboard and i will use the right arrow on the keyboard and that will select uh, one character at a time and when i come to the end of that word i can release my shift and i can see i just selected that word and i did not select the uh paragraph uh mark right there if i would like to select lines that are not next to each other or paragraphs that are not next to each other i can easily do that so i'm moving the pointer to the white space on the left until it changes to a right pointing arrow and i can click to select the first line and hold down the control button on my keyboard and now um, move with my mouse and i uh, select the next line that i would like to highlight right there and i can still move and select another line right there i'm still holding down the control button and i can select um, all the items that are not next to each other as long as i'm holding down my control key even if they are in a different page i can do that and as you can see i'm selecting all the lines that are not next to each other and if you would like to format that you can format only those lines that are not next to each other so for example if i would like to bold only those lines i can use the keyboard shortcut Control b and um that bolts all the lines that are not next to each other or all the lines that i had highlighted so i will undo that uh, with my keyboard shortcut Control z 
and I have undone that. The other thing you can also select uh, the entire document and to do that you can use your keyboard shortcut Control A that will select the entire document and if I scroll down you can see I have selected all the documents All I have selected all the content in my document. I would also like to show you how to use the clipboard so if you come up here on your ribbon on the home tab and you see uh, the clipboard group right there if you click on this arrow right there the dialog box launcher so if i click on that i can see that opens for me the clipboard and i can see i do not have any item to paste here but anytime i copy um any word or if i copy anything from here it will be uh copied here in my clipboard and if I would like to paste it somewhere in my document, I can do that using the clipboard. And I'll show you how to do that. So if I just select a few words from the second paragraph right there. And I will board that. Control B. And I will also underline that. Control U to underline. And Control I to change that to italic. And then I'll Control C to copy that. And I see that has been copied in my clipboard. I can also copy something else. So I can select some more words right there. Control C. And that is also copied in my uh, clipboard right there. And I can also copy more words right there. Control C. That is copied in my clipboard. And I'll get some more words right there. And this time I'll just do Control B to bold that. And I'll add some color. So right there, I'm adding some color. I'm highlighting that. And uh, select that again. Control C. And that is also copied in my clipboard. I'll also get some text and I will format that. And as I format that, you can see I'm using the font right there. This is called the character level formatting. And the reason it's because I'm just formatting the characters and I can format in many different ways. I can bold, as you see here, I bolded, I used italic and I underlined those words. Right here, I have bolded and I've highlighted those words. And for these words that I have highlighted here, I will uh, change the font color right there and I will change that to green and I will also bold that. And I can also change the font size on that one right there. That's the way you change the font size. I can change that to 20. And another thing that I can do also, I can change the case, uh, this button right there. If I click on that, and if I click uppercase, all those words will change to uppercase right there. So all that is character level formatting. It's only formatting the characters that I'm selecting. So I will copy that, control C, and you can see that is also copied in my clipboard. So if I have any items copied on my clipboard and I would like to paste them in my document, I can definitely do that. So I'm selecting right here on the second page. I can get, uh, any item that I have on the clipboard and once I click on that item it will be pasted on where I have selected on my document so if I click that you see that paste in the second page because that's where my cursor was or that's where I had selected to paste that and if I click that it pastes that so um, when I paste that and if I decide I do not want this pasted as a bolded and I don't want the underline, no problem, I can do that. I can see I have the mini toolbar right there. And if I click on that arrow, I have options to change that. I can say use the destination theme. I can say keep source formatting, which will be the italic and the underline and the bold. Or I can say merge formatting to be the same as what I have in my document or in that page. Or I can say keep text only. And as I do that, keep text only, you see all the formatting is gone and I'm just left with the text.
and I'll click on that, keep text only. I can also get that and you will notice once I copy that, it will paste where I have my cursor on the document. And I click that and you can see it's pasting all the formatting too. And I have that so if I want to change uh, the formatting, I can do that. I will click on that arrow and I will say keep text only. Like that, I just have keep text only. Another thing that I would like to show you is that with the non-printing characters on, it's easy to select the items that you would like to copy and paste. For example, if I would just like to select just this part, sometimes it's hard when you're selecting with your mouse and you can uh, select the, uh, the hard return accidentally, even if you do not want to select that. So I can select that with my selection uh, cursor using the right arrow key. So I have my cursor right there and I'll hold down my shift and then I will use my right arrow all the way carefully i'm just selecting up to the period right there and carefully i'm not selecting the paragraph mark and i will control c to copy that and then i come to my clipboard and i would like to paste that right there on the first page so i will click on that and you see as i paste that it didn't uh, copy the hard return or it didn't copy the paragraph mark. And so I don't have that there. I just pasted just those words. So I will turn off the non-printing characters and I will show you something. Control shift asterisk. I turned that off and I would like to select the same words here. Control C to copy that. And I will turn on the non-printing characters, Control shift asterisk. And you can see, because I selected my words here when I didn't have the non-printing characters on, I accidentally selected even the paragraph mark or the hard return right there. And if I come right here and I paste that here, so I come over here and I get that from my clipboard and I paste that, you see it pasted that and also added another paragraph right there. You can see the cursor is right there. So it pasted that right there and also added the paragraph. And the reason being, I also copied the paragraph mark right there. So that's why it is important when you're uh, typing in your Word document uh, to turn on the non-printing characters. They might be annoying, but they are helpful because they will help you to provide a visual representation uh, with details of what you're typing in your Word document. Another thing that you can do in your Word document is say, for example, you formatted these um, words right there and you would like to copy just this formatting to some other words in your document. You can definitely do that. And because this is just character level formatting, it's only stored in these characters that have been formatted. So if I select on that, and as I release my mouse, you can see the mini toolbar right there. Uh, it's coming in handy. So, and you can see the highlighted buttons right there, bold, italic, and underline. That is exactly what I have formatted my uh, words right there. If I just want to copy the formatting, I can click on this brush right there and you see it's named uh, the Format Painter. This brush right there, it will just copy the formatting that you have either on your character or probably on the paragraph. But in our case here, we just have the character level formatting. So if I click on that brush right there and you can see as I move my mouse, I have that brush there. So any words that I click on, it will copy the same formatting that is here into the words that I will highlight. So if I select that, and as I release my mouse, you can see it just formatted the same way that I have the formatting there. So that's a character level formatting. It's only formatting the characters. You can also use the paragraph level formatting. And the paragraph level formatting is this right there. 
and this just formats only the paragraphs. The difference between the character level formatting and the paragraph level formatting is because for the character, I have to select the words that I want to format or the characters that I want to format. And then I can come right here and I can use any button there to format them. But for the paragraph level formatting, I can be anywhere in the paragraph and just click anywhere in the paragraph and then come right here on the paragraph level formatting. And if I just click center right there or the keyboard shortcut control E, that will format just that paragraph. And if I want to copy just the formatting for this paragraph, I can do that. If I right click right there to open the mini toolbar and I can get my brush right there. And now you see as I move my mouse, I have my brush right there. So if I come here to the second page and if I click on that paragraph right there, you can see it formats the same way as I have my paragraph formatted right there. Another way you can copy the paragraph level formatting, if you have your non-printing characters on, and if I just select that paragraph mark right there, and I click on the format painter right there, and if I come up here and click on this first paragraph, anywhere in that first paragraph, and click, it copies the formatting right there. And because it's a paragraph level formatting, it's stored in the paragraph and I do not have to select any particular characters. I just have to click anywhere in the paragraph and it will copy my formatting to that paragraph. The other type of level formatting is the section level formatting. And I would like to show you um, how to do that. So if I press Ctrl and, and go to the end of my Word document right there, so I've, I would like to insert another section here so that I can show you how to apply the section level formatting. I will come right here to my layout on my ribbon, the layout tab, and I will use the page setup group right here. And I will click on the breaks. And from the breaks, I can click on the section break. I'll click on this next page, which inserts a section and start a new page section on the new page. So if I click on that, you can see right here, it says section break, and then it takes me to the next page right there. And with a new page added here, and because this has a section break right here, I can be able to change the orientation for just this page, and it will not change the, uh, the orientation for these other pages because these are two different sections. So to show you that or to illustrate that, I have my uh, cursor right there or my insertion point is right there. And I can come here to the page setup group, click on the orientation and change that to landscape. And you can see once I do that, this is only changing on the fourth page or on the last page that I have inserted here, but it's not changing on these other three pages that are at the top here. And the reason is because here I do have a section break to the next page and it's any formatting that I will add, it will only apply to this section. Another thing that I would like to show you is how to use the first line indent feature and also to apply spacing to your paragraphs. So I'll scroll up to the that page right here and we have our paragraphs right here. So when applying the first line indent, you do not want to press space, 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 space to do that. And you also do not want to press tab to do that. Though some people use that, but it's not uh, really efficient. Whatever you want to do when you're applying the first line indent to your document is to apply the first line indent using the first line indent feature. So I will control Z on that and control Z to undo that. And the way to do that is on your home tab right there on the paragraph group right there. If you click on the dialog box launcher right there, 
it opens for you the dialog box and you can apply the indentation uh, from the dialog box. You can also select uh, the paragraphs that you would like to apply the first line indent filter to. And then if I right click on that, I can click right there, click on the paragraph and that will open for you the, uh, the paragraph dialog box over there. And I can see the indentation right here. And if I click right here on special, click on that arrow and click on first line indent, uh, that will apply the first line indent to my paragraphs right there. If I would like to change the spacing, you can see right now it is zero and this one is eight. If I would like to increase, I can use these arrows to decrease or to increase. And if I would like to change the line spacing from here, Right now it's multiple, I can change that to single or I can change that to double spacing. And if I'm changing to double spacing, I can change that to zero. And now I have zero before and after each line. And I also have double spacing right there. And I have my first line indent at 0 0.5 inches. So if I click OK, you can see right there on my paragraphs right there, I have the first line indent and I also have double spacing for my paragraphs. I know we have covered a lot of things in this video, but there's two more keyboard shortcuts that I would like to show you as I end this video. So I'm scrolling down to the last page or I can use the keyboard shortcut control end to go to the last page. And I would like to show you how to insert a date. It is important to know how to insert a date in a Word document because you will need this when you are writing business letters or when you're writing research papers. So to do that, you can come to the insert tab right there. And then right there on the text group, you can see we have the date and time. So if I click on that, it opens for me the date and time dialog box. And uh, you don't have to worry about typing your date. You can click on any format that you would like there. And if you want your date to update automatically every day you open your Word document, you can check that box there and that will enable your date to update automatically. If you do not want your date to update automatically, you can make sure that box is unchecked and then you click OK. And I will enter. And I want to show you the keyboard shortcut if you are uh, writing your Word document and uh, you always have to insert the date. So I'll go back to the Home tab. And if you press Alt on your keyboard and release it, so I'm pressing Alt and I release it. And I see up here on my ribbon, every tab right here has a key. So for insert is N. So if I press N and release, I can see it opens uh, for me the insert tab right there and I can see most of all these buttons have the key so I will check uh, the date and time it has a D so if I press the D on my keyboard that opens for me the date dialog box and I can select the date right there and again I don't want to update uh, automatically I can say OK. So if you want to do that fast, you're pressing the key and you're releasing and then you're pressing the next key and releasing and then you're pressing the last key and releasing. So Alt release and release and D and you select the date and you say OK. So if I want to do that a little bit faster, I'll press Alt and D and I select the format that I would like and say OK. So another thing that I would like to show you when we were changing the layout for this section, uh, we went to the page layout and then we had to come to the orientation right there and then we had to click uh, the layout right there to change the layout. So if you would like to use the keyboard shortcut to change the layout, you can do that. So to use our keyboard to change the page setup orientation, uh, we can do that. So again, I'm making sure I'm in home so that I can show you how to use the keyboard shortcut. And again, I'll press Alt and release. And then on the layout, I see letter P. So I'll press P. And then right here, 
on the dialog box launcher, I see the page set up right there. So if I press SP, I have the page setup dialog box open and I can press a uh, landscape or portrait. So I will change to portrait right there and I will click OK. And that changed the orientation right there. So if I want to do that fast, I'll say Alt P S P and that opens that again and I can change the orientation right there to landscape. And if I say OK, I change my orientation for that section back to landscape right there. So um, one last thing, if you would like to clear your clipboard, you can just click there and you clear all and you can click uh, the X uh, right there to close the clipboard. And I can go back to control home at the beginning of my document. That was a lot of things that we have learned in this video. And we will continue to learn more as we continue our study on Word. For our next video, we will create an advertising uh, flyer. And we'll also learn how to create a research paper and a business letter for our upcoming videos too. Thank you and see you on our next video.